What's up everybody and welcome to the very British review of the procedural VR horror game, The Persistence. Ah, it's the name of the game. Persistence. Where's the name of the ship? But still. As you all know, VR holds a, um, a special place in my heart, as does horror, but God knows why, because in the deepest sense of the word, I am a bloody damn scaredy cat. <laughs> ah, there you are, fucking hell, I thought you died. This time, however, it has the added terror that the map changes every time you play. So just once you think you've got the hang of it, I'll die. What the hell is that? Whoa! Die, everyone's in protect! And the whole map changes and I have to start all over again. This is because the map is built by deck. Each deck gets progressively harder and is itself generated from parts of a deck including rooms, events, monsters, items, where you can find them. I've come across cutscenes and even small hidden areas with enough searching around that have explained entire plot lines, which is wonderful. Uh, this is totally explained in game though. You wake up, the ship's AI tweets out that the ship is not in a good way because of a black hole that seems to be a bit close for comfort. Second bombshell, turns out you're a clone of the ship's security officer, Zamiri Elder, who's been brought back from the dead by 3D printing out a new body each time you've died. Uh, so a bit like Dark Souls, if it all goes tits up, you just start over. But the clever part is that black hole. It's warping and changing the ship and the time and space all around you. Thus, if you die, you'll start in an entirely new surrounding and it'll all have changed. It actually reminds me of a great episode of Star Trek Voyager where the exact same thing happens and they're all running around the ship confused what deck they're on and how they got there. Baxter, what are you doing here? I wish I knew. I'm trying to get to the cargo bay. And I'm trying to get to engineering. Can't find the cargo bay and I can't find my security team. I've been wandering around for about 10 minutes. Well, at least I know I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Should we check the map? Should we see where we're going, boys and girls? That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Of course, that's not all, because the black hole is also making all other sorts of machines, systems, and 3D people printers go crazy, uh, throwing out all sorts of monstrosities that luckily fit into wonderful fightable game types. You've got the grunts, and oh no, we can do better than that, can't we? And now you're dead. The big guys. No, no! Oh, fuck! Lurkers that hide around corners and under tables crawl through a little bit. Ah! Oh, in hell, these little sh they are awful. Take that! Ha ha! The witches from Left for Dead that can teleport and they're an absolute nightmare. Oh dear! This could be bad. Teleport! Uh, and a good number of others, but a special mention to the lightning thing. Oh no! Look at that! If it can open doors, and I've been lied to, but. Oh, it can! Run away! Her proper name is the Bloodhound. And she just follows you no matter where you go or how far you run. I have on a few occasions found myself in her sights and honestly there is nothing to get me to need a new pair of underwear faster than the sound of static electricity and the tapping of a crowbar on the floor about two feet behind you. Oh my god, I'm scared. I am really scared. Oh hell. Pick a direction to kill me. I will go the other direction. <laughs> I don't think the ivy serum will work on you, so I'm gonna leave. Movement in the Persistence is all done by a DualShock 4, and it uses proper movement controls to allow for sort of regular first-person shooter controls that you would be used to from like Halo or Call of Duty, which is awesome because God knows how any horror would be playable with move controls. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see move controls and that use so you could actually pick things up, but Resident Evil 7 taught me the hard way that accuracy and speed are really the deciding factors in a VR horror. And with that so, the DualShock really does the job. But don't let that put you off. I personally love the controls. Die! Okay, good. I just have to hit it. Can I hit it? Am I doing any damage? You can also upgrade your suit, your body, your abilities, and anything else that you happen to have on you by killing creatures and absorbing their tasty, tasty stem cells. 
and just like in Dark Souls, you can then return home with the souls you've collected and upgrade that spacesuit. Wait, w what's that needle for? <laughs> that was fine. That was just an injection. <laughs> then you can jump right back into the mess and start from scratch as a whole new you. There's a companion app as well that allows a second player on mobile to help or hinder the first player with mutants, opening doors, or even just trolling them for a couple of points here and there. I haven't been able to get this to work at home myself, but I've seen it working on a mate's VR headset and it was a huge amount of fun. Uh, I also want to point out how beautiful the game is. On a personal note, I find it absolutely breathtakingly stunning when I'm wandering around. Here it is! Look at this! This is my favourite place in the game. It looks so lifelike because it is just one perfect piece of area lighting. The shadows are lovely, there's like a wooden parquet floor. It looks amazing. And for PSVR, they've gone to a real effort to use lighting and effects in-game to the headset's advantage, all adding to an already wonderfully immersive and absolutely terrifying experience. I think the persistence is really a must-have for the die-hard VR fans. If you're looking at it and thinking, I like Dead Space, will I like this? The answer is yes. It got very high scores from a lot of sites and it's still holding a lot of fans' attention. It's got a huge amount of replay value and I still feel that I haven't seen everything. That's pretty much all I can think to say about the persistence, really, but I have absolutely loved the experience so far. I've been immersed into the world and I've been upsetting my neighbours by screaming like a girl every time I put it on. I don't believe in scores or numbers, so if you've gotten this far expecting one, then you'll have to suffer and form your own damn opinion. But at least, now you have mine to help. See you all next time. And of course, if you enjoyed that video, then don't forget to hit the like button because it really helps me out on the channel. Smash that bell icon and set those notifications so you don't miss a video. And of course, if you haven't already, then consider becoming a subscriber. And we will see you all next time. Take care.